Hello again, Internet. This is Garrig, and today we're going to be doing another bronze weapon test. Today, comparing bronze weapons on a pork target with steel weapons on a pork target. Now, I've mentioned before in a previous pork video that I did, I wasn't hugely excited about how well it was done. It was kind of done off the cuff. So today, we're going a little bit more pro. And uh, the reason for using pork is because uh, it's much closer to a human flesh analog. The, the meat is much closer to a human consistency than chicken is. The skin is also similar. Um, the bone is also similar. This is a particular heavy and fat piece of pork, though, so I'm not entirely sure we're going to get, you know, a perfect sort of results on it, although I suppose it would be very comparable to cutting into a particularly fat person. But, uh... Basically much better than chicken, and I'm hoping to do the majority of my upcoming videos on pork rather than chicken or other flesh. Although I hear goat is good as well. If anybody has any data or commentary on that, please let me know. Um, I'm always looking to get as accurate as I can get. Also, we've got pork feet to test as well, which, while substantially smaller than a human hand, I suppose are somewhat comparable or at least the closest thing I could get that's comparable. So, um, haven't been able to find four legs yet, but I think this will still teach us a bit of something about how effective these weapons would be on a uh, blow to the hand or foot. Although, again, much smaller. So, um, I wanted to mention that I had done some bronze versus steel weapons testing a few months ago, but there was no camera present, unfortunately, and no one to hold it, or no tripod, you know, that sort of thing. Um, a friend of mine is a collector of weapons as well, and he had a large number of very fine steel swords. And basically, I blocked, and he threw into my block, and then he blocked, and I threw into his block. And um, the results are unsurprising. Steel is the better weapon material. Um, the blow that struck my sword left something of a gouge in it, um, or a scratch at least, but it's substantial. And my blow on his blunted at the point of impact. Um, now, again, not hugely unsurprising, really, but, um, you know, these weapons never really would have come into contact with each other in history anyway. As I've mentioned, iron, yes, and this proves superior to iron, though I am still hoping to test that, because he's actually quite a doubter of that one, but neither of us has any iron swords yet to do any testing with. But, um, yeah, hoping to do some more comparative stuff. This particular sword right here that I'm going to be using is a Viking longsword uh, made by Windless Steelcrafts. It has um, some uh, duct tape on it, as you can see, because there was some damage to the handle. Um, the steel is great, but uh, as has been my experience with most of the Windless Steelcrafts weapons, the handles almost always have a substantial problem. Also, if the blades get too long, they get a little whippy. But this is a really good length for them. And we did do some stress testing on that blade as well, and it actually comes out quite nice. So, without further ado, I'm going to be doing some very basic blows on this, comparing the two of them. Uh, they're fairly close in weight. This one's about a pound and a quarter, this one's about a pound and a half, and um, it's the closest I've got. Unfortunately, I don't have a leaf-bladed steel short sword, although I wish I did. And if I did, I'd be doing that comparison, maybe someday. But for now, we're going to be going with that one and this one. So, for a first blow, one here, so, alright, and let's take a look at this. So, as I mentioned, this is a particularly thick piece of flesh. It's like 10 pounds, so this goes into the flesh, whoa, actually this goes pretty deep, hold on. This goes pretty deep into the flesh, you can kind of see with my finger about how deep it goes. I can feel the bone underneath it, but I cannot see it. So, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it goes just about, yeah, it goes to the bone deep down in there. Again, this is like several inches thick flesh. Again, this would be like cutting into somebody's thigh. So, from what I can tell, yeah, I can feel a little scour on the bone here. So, the blade went to the bone, scratched it, but went through this much flesh in order to hit the bone. In the future, I'll have to do this with a ruler. <laughs> let's, uh, let's compare that to our steel friend here. So we're going to be going for about there as well. Hopefully I will not be cutting the cord that's holding this guy up. Okay. Wow. That cut 
here and cut into the bone, broke the bone. Hold on. So yeah, we can see the bone right here and then the bone right here at the bottom. And yeah, this went pretty much through the bone here. Keep in mind that I struck lower where the flesh is not quite as thick. But yeah, this cut all the way here to here. Uh, let's try one more with the bronze. So that was just above the previous blow. And this went really, really deep. Again, um, I think that some of the depth on the steel's penetration is due to the fact that the flesh is so much thinner here, as opposed to, like, look how thick the flesh is here, compared to with the bronze sword, I'm striking higher, and it's this thick. Um, yet again, it goes all the way to the, to the bone. I can feel the impact on the bone, but that's how deep it went. This one did not have as much depth to go. So let's do one more with the long sword and aim for about here. So let's see how that works out. All right, back up. I'm going to be going for about here-ish. Ah. <laughs> well. Well, let's see. The long sword went all the way through, cut into the bone, cut through the bone, and went to the other side. So, yeah, that answers that pretty effectively. Yes, steel is a better <laughs> material for making a weapon, obviously. That's really kind of an awesome wound. And the longer blade also means longer point of contact. So, so it went from here to here from that one blow. All right, next, we're going to be doing the hand in a separate video. Three, thank you much. So yeah, bronze <laughs> does work. You know, we, we get these cuts that do quite well, but compared to the steel, it does much better. All right, thank you much. Well, that was fun. We just totally saw a technological innovation of a few thousand years and why steel superseded bronze. Um, it gets much sharper and it holds the edge better. It's also a more massive weapon and uh, its balance is very different as well. But um, I'd like to compare how it does against the feet and also how it does versus thrusts. And then for fun, we might end out with a few more blows from the long sword. So, all right, so here we have a foot. And so on the foot, oh, damn. So this cut into the bone, through the bone, and yeah, into the foot, like just past the bone to the flesh behind the bone. Let's do, oh, and also a bit into the bone on what would be the sort of equivalent of the thumb here. Let's do one more. And... And look. Again, really deep, really solid blow. And there was a slight bending in the sword as well. But just tapped, and it's now effectively straightened. So there we go. Cut into the bone, touches the flesh behind the bone after it gets through the bone. Now let's see how steel does. I am guessing that we're going to see another improvement in weapons technology. It's right here, and... Yeah, definitely an improvement. <laughs> so, with the steel sword, it cut right through the hand. Literally, it's completely through. It cut into the pell behind it a little bit, 
And the only reason it's not completely severed is because there's a tiny bit of skin here that was not cut, and it's hanging on by that little flap of skin, which is awesome. All right, now let's compare some thrusts from both. All right. All right, let's see. And so, all the way through, out the other, so I'm not going to let it fall, so went all the way in. <laughs> went in deep. Again, it's a really deep uh, particular cut of meat. And with an extra thrust, now out the other side. All the way through. And now compare it to this deal. Slip up. And we're going to go for... All right, came out. And came out and made contact with the bone. No substantial damage to the tip. And let's go for one more for good measure. Up, ah, all the way through. And again, this is a pretty thick piece of meat. Let's do one more cut just for fun. So. All right, now let's see how bad that was. All right, so this is one cut. Took it from, and this is in a plane and an angle that we did not test before. Went from here to here. It literally went through this bone here at the bottom, split it here, and that's what stopped it, is it got into this bone and slowed down, and it cut through this much flesh, which is maybe, what, four or five inches worth? And that's in a cut. And that's through the skin at an angle where there were no other, you know, things to really uh, aid it through. It went through this fat and this meat, and it almost went all the way through. And that is, again, a one-handed blow from a one-handed sword. And the sword itself weighs only about a pound and a half. So anyone who says that a sword that is this light as a one-handed longsword is ineffective, I exhibit A. Now, again, the bronze sword did not perform as well, but it performed pretty well for its size. Keep in mind, this is a lighter sword, it is a shorter sword, and it does not have all the metallurgical advantages of steel, and yet it was still able to cut to the bone, and in the case of the hand, cut into the bone, and break the bone, but stop there, as opposed to the steel weapon, which went all the way through. Again, this is not apparently a dismembering weapon, though it is indeed a weapon for making good flesh wounds, doing some bone damage. It's a very good thruster. Um, to be completely honest, at close range, I think this would be the better thrusting option, but to be completely honest, a uh, steel version of this would obviously be the better choice. But historically, we're now getting a bit of a, more of an idea as how these compare. So um, just for the sake of fun, let's do, since I have this not completely destroyed yet, camera over here, let's go with a... So that one was more contact, my fault, on the Pell, and on the actual target, it made contact, snapped the bone here, cut into the skin, Let's try one more. So here and at close range, again, cuts into the bone, breaks the bone, stops on the other end of the bone. And just for fun, let's see how this finishes this off. And cuts completely through, goes straight through the bone, and everything is hanging on by a few bits of, oh, here we go, a few bits of tendon and skin on the backside. So yes, bronze works, 
Steel works better. <laughs> um, this is, again, a very light sword at about a pound and a half. And it'll do that. So, steel and bronze, they both work. Yes, steel is an advance, and it does do better. So, thank you.